the presentation here it's not something about cyber it's more about uh, what why what, what privileged identity management is all about okay so first of all what are privileged identities so accounts with elevated permissions and access to sensitive information is actually the privileged identities so this is something that we frequently come across in our day to day life and uh, since we are all into the it domain uh, we might have uh, we, we must have worked into a you know a scenario wherein we are we are having some mission critical access or access to some mission critical machines as well let's say if you are working into a intel domain or a unix side or a database administrator or a network admin in all those cases you must be having some admin credentials so this is something called as privileged identities wherein you make an interactive login to the target systems and you have the password string available with you so this is something a kind of risk and there are a lot of implications if these are if this uh, password credentials or or password strings are compromised there are a lot of methods that uh, that an intruder or an uh, attacker can get hold of these credentials and eventually there is a, uh, you know uh, infra takeover eventually so these privileged identities are basically uh, segregated as elevated personal shared account application account now what is this so let us discuss one by one all of them so let's say if i have i if i have, I have a uh, server abc and i have the do, uh, admin administrator credentials available with me that is quarty at the rate one two three okay so let's say if i were to log in the server ABD, abc i will simply uh, you know uh, i will simply open up my uh, uh rdp uh rdp client i will put up the server server name or an ip or an fqdn and it and it, then it will prompt me for the uh, username and the password i will put in this password and i am i'm get uh, and, and and finally i i will be on in the server so this is something known as interactive login when where wherein you have the password string available with you other credentials are known to you and you are making an interactive login so this is this is this is uh, this is your individual ID where wherein you can uh, you know log into the target system. Okay, so let's say as I, if I if I have an ID called okay, as an AD ID. Okay, I'll make a login to my workstation on day to day basis. Okay, but this ID has no privileges. It is just limited to logging into workstation. That's all. I can I can navigate uh, to my emails. I can do some uh, you know very basic level tasks like sending emails and all and there would be some there would be some uh, sort of uh, uh, corporate applications that i could have access to maybe some hr portal my salary slip but coming to infrastructure this would have no access at all when it comes to something like let's say for example adm or maybe or maybe So let's say if I'm working into Wintel domain, I might have something like that, Ajay underscore ADM, or if I'm into Unix side, I might have some ID like Ajay underscore Nix, or I am into admi uh, uh, database administration, I could have ID like that. So basically I own something, or, or I have the credentials for some mission critical machines, which I can authenticate and make make my daily, uh, daily BAU work done. So this is called the personal privileged identities. So personal privilege is something wherein you have personal accounts with elevated permissions. So this is primarily used for privileged operations wherein you are making some major configurational changes on the target system, you are re rebooting the system, you are doing some, some sort of you know, updates on the system wherein you would require personal pers uh, elevated personal ID. When it comes to shared accounts, as the name suggests, it's more of like something uh, wherein the secret is shared among all of your team members. So let's say if you are working in, in a team of 10 and you have people uh, uh, with, a, uh, with, 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 you know, common, uh, common, uh, you know, uh, BAU work and there are shifts that you are working into. In that case, there could be some elevated accounts which are for which the password is known to all of you. So this is primarily used when you are working as a Unix administrator or Windows administrator, wherein you have privileged accounts and the password is known to all of you. So let's say for an example here, we have a shared privileged account. Let's say if you are working in a team of 10 and there is something account called Wintel underscore ADM, uh, ADM and the password of this is like like quality at the rate one, two, three. So all of uh, for all of your colleagues, the password is known. So there is no, uh, you know, uh, accountability there, there. There is no audit logs that who has done what, what on the target system. Plus the password is very simple here. 
it's very guessable and uh, it's a common nature that we used to keep our password very short and simple and uh, we, that we can easily memorize and that we can you know uh, we, we have a high reluctance in terms of changing the password as well so eventually if this uh, password gets compromised that means it's it's overall uh, infra takeover so somebody can hold or can go, get hold of your infrastructure maybe if this password can uh, allow us to uh, authenticate domain controllers some mission critical servers some ntp servers uh, so, uh, maybe some uh, some sort of uh, uh, you know uh, mail uh, mailbox servers or any anything i mean if if you if you own a do domain admin credentials that means you can authenticate to any server in your environment if the servers if this uh, credentials are compromised then there is a high risk that your that your services your uh, uh, their the services of your infrastructure might get down so again you would not be able to isolate the user who has done what because this is being a sh shared credential okay so this is again a risk okay so this is primarily used in the case of emergency fire fire call disaster recovery and privileged operations the last is application accounts now what is application account application is basically application accounts are basically needed for app to app communication so let's say if i were to open up uh, some or uh, if i if i have created some sort of uh, you know uh, uh if, if if i have some application hosted on a server let's say this is my uh, uh yeah, this is my server abc i have this particular password for this server administrator and i have created a powershell script which basically logs into the server and checks the checks the service status let's say this is my service on that particular server service app, app one and my powershell basic powershell script basically authenticates to server abc and it checks whether the service up and running so in, in in the event of creating a script i need to somewhere specify the password and the username which basically used to authenticate to the target server and checks the status so let's suppose if these credentials are compromised or if my script is getting compromised so there are a fair enough chances that an intruder or a hacker can uh, alter my code or he could basically uh, get 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 the credentials uh, you know uh, 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 you he can basically use the credentials some of the other way or maybe he can put some ransomware or a malware on, on the target system and it will eventually bring my uh, services down so this is a very common scenario wherein we have all automations ongoing in a, in, a, in, a, in an organization we have a lot of bad jo jo jobs we have a lot of autosys jobs running in our organization so there are a lot of hard coded credentials in the script to safeguard all of these kind of uh, things we have privileged identity management solution now having said that privileged identity management is not just cyberarc there are a lot of cyberarc uh, there are a lot of pam solutions available in the market but cyberarc has been the leading tool for the last 7 uh, years since it covers mostly everything uh, all of the use cases are covered from cyberarc there are a lot of security layers that cyberarc provides there are a lot of uh, you know uh, benefits of using cyberarc reason being it is very flexible and it is very scalable solution and it is it is not complicated to implement as well so so every component of cyberarc has its own uh, functions every component of a cyberarc has its own benefit so we'll discuss everything about it so there are a lot of other competitors in the market as well like cyberarc ca pam itachi pam then there is uh, uh, then, the, the, then there is a beyond trust as well but cyberarc has been leading for the last 7 years so uh, i will share you the white paper as well that uh, from the gartner when which basically talks about the magic quadrant and cyberarc has been a leading tool uh, for, for for the last years and you would get to know why why it is leading so we will we will cover all the use cases which make, make cyberarc the number one solution in the market so these are the segregation of privileged accounts what are the segregation there are risk associated with them is basically these are most powerful accounts in the organization they have access to sensitive sensitive information so as we discussed that let's say if you are working under the capacity of database administrator or a windows administrator or unix administrator then definitely you would have access uh, access to the mission critical servers for sure and you can you can make anything uh, you know you can do anything as 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 soon as you get into the servers the the most challenging part is they are rare, rarely changed so let's say if i have a shared credentials i want i want uh, uh, change them very frequently and if i change i will make sure that the password is very simple and it should be comfortable to be used okay it should not be complicated i, I like it it should have a, like 20 characters of password complexity with alphanumeric and special symbols in it so that will not be the case the, as we discussed there is no user accountability 
because uh, we, since the credentials are shared, we, ne we never uh, get to know that who has done what at what time. Now, there are challenges with, uh, with this particular approach, like, you know, uh, there are financial losses. You might have heard about ransomware, uh, WannaCry, uh, Bad Rabbit about it. So these were ransomwares that were caused because of the phishing attack attacks or the intruder uh, were able to get in, get hold of the infrastructure or the credentials that were very weak by the administrators. Then brand image as well. Then there is a business continuity damage. Since your services would be down, your, there would be an outage overall. Then there could be some GDPR penalties as well, regulatory penalties. There are a lot of uh, regulations that an organization has to follow. So accordingly, uh, a PAM solution is a mandate for any organization to have. So there could be some regulatory penalties as well. And finally, the customer loss. Uh, in case if the confidentiality of that uh, organization is breached or the confidential data is, uh, you know, st uh, stolen by some in intruders on attacker, then eventually it would be it would lead to customer loss. So how we can basically safeguard this thing, and how we can basically, uh, you know, uh, protect all our privileged credentials? So we have CyberArk solution, which basically is a PAM solution, which is pri privileged uh, account management or privileged identity management, uh, are one and the same thing. So CyberArk Solution is an uh, information security company that provides digital vaults for securing and managing privileged users and highly sensitive information within and across global enterprise networks. So CyberArk is something which basically uh, safeguards all sort of privileged accounts, whatever we have in our organization. Now we'll see how exactly it saves. So let me navigate to my lab first and I will demonstrate how exactly we can, uh, you know, use the CyberArk. Uh, to save our credentials. So let me open it first of all. Let me log off once uh, and then I'll show you how we can basically connect to a target system without compromising the credentials at all. So this is the web page of CyberArk, which is which is called PBW. We'll discuss any, uh, everything about the components though, but just for an example, I'm showing this is basically the web console that through which the users as well as the administrators connect to the CyberArk application. Let this be open first. Now let's say if I were to connect to some Unix system for an example here. So what I'll do, I'll just open up my party. I'll put in the details of the, uh, the of the Unix system. Let's for an example, I need to connect to this particular IP. Let me open this. I will put the IP address of, or maybe host name of the target system, which I want to connect. I'll open up the session and I will log in as, let's say this is the credentials I have and password string is available with me as well. So it's very simple. If somebody get hold of my credentials, then there are fair enough chances he can get into the target system as well. Okay, he can do anything, he can make it, uh, attempt to uh, elevate himself as a pseudo and he can he can alter the changes as well he can make alterations on the system i think this id is not having the pseudo then. I need to add this into sudo. Anyways, so this is something that I can get into the target system directly with, with my credentials and I can do anything on the target system. Now, when it comes to CyberArk, you could see this, this account I have onboarded in CyberArk as well. Without exposing the password, I can get into the target system. So this is something that uh, since I am logged in as an administrator, I could see the pa password here. I do have the show copy options though. But when a normal uh, user or a test user tries to log in, he will not be able to see the password under any stages at all. He will just be provided the protocol through which he want to connect. 
let's say you want to connect to a unix system he would be provided ssh protocol if he wants to share some file then he can basically launch it with winscp if he wants to connect some uh, windows machine then he can basically launch it with the rdp uh, protocol if he wants to connect some database then accordingly there would be management studio options that would be available with him if he wants to connect to a website then https protocol would be available to him so without exposing the password we can connect to anything for an example if i were to connect to this particular target system with cyberac so i can simply click on connect here and now cyberac will take me to the target system and the event of uh, you know in the event of connecting as well it will make sure that whatever i'm doing on the target system they are uh, the, the 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 actions of mine are thoroughly recorded as well so cyberarc will make sure that i have it basically record the keystroke logging visual logs as well as the audit logs so even if i try to uh, you know even if if i want to have further uh, you know whitelisting and blacklisting of the commands as well that is possible uh, as well so i will not be able to my, uh, elevate myself to maybe a pseudo uh, pseudo level or maybe maybe i will not be able to navigate to the directories which are restricted for me so you can see that cyberarc has started the session here you can see the you are being recorded okay i have changed the password though but i'll just uh, i have changed the password for this particular account hence it is not happening but but this is basically how you can connect and if i were to show you how the recording happens in cyberarc so i had a previous session uh, yesterday itself so you can see the recording here so i'm just logging in on an auditor here so here i can view the complete recording whatever i i have done or maybe someone has done i do have a possibility of uh, interjecting in the live session as well and i can kick out the uh, session for a person who is doing some malicious activity on the target system so i am being an auditor i can do anything uh, for someone i can basically check the commands that someone is doing on the target system maybe if he is doing some sort of mission critical work and i want to check if he is doing it correctly or not so i do this is the latest session that we have just uh, were unable to connect let me put let me open up the last session that we had let me plug, start this one let me play this recording once so this is how i authenticated to cyberarc without exposing the password so during my complete course of activity on the target system i would not need any any kind of password at all or the password will not be visible to me at all so let's say if i have added some account here you can see this is the user i added then i need to elevate myself to sudo so these were my activities where, where, which were very well covered i can basically share this recordings to to the platform team in in case if they had some outage or some issues on their target system i can share the keystroke logging as well now here i can i can download the keystroke login i can share the audit logs as well with them i do have reports to check as well like who has logged into the target system what what time what was the activities that he has performed if there were some any uh, commands that he has uh, you know uh, executed on the target system i can I, i do have a option to search as per the commands as well so here we are we are we are making sure that uh, you know none of the users are having the password string available at all they should all authenticate to the target system without having the password string available with to them so basically any pam solutions provides two things the first is the session management and the second is the password management 
So session management is something that you can connect to any target system without exposing the password. The second thing is the password management. That means there are three things that happens in the password management. That is change, verify, reconcile. I'll explain all of them. First of all, let's 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 uh, discuss the change. What change is all about? Whenever you authenticate to any server or any target system, uh, Windows target system, for example. Uh, the, the password you put into the into into uh, into the into the console that is basically having a corresponding hash value let's say i have a password called quality at the rate one two three it would have a, its corresponding hash value that stays on the target system as, uh, uh, only okay so let's say if i am using this particular password for quite long time so there would be weak hash that eventually be sitting on the target system and if this hash being compromised compromised so this is as good as password. So somebody, maybe a hacker can get hold of this hash and he can authenticate to any target system, whichever is having a common hash. So let's say if, if this particular password is same uh, for, for mo most of the servers I, I log into, then there would be common hash. In that case, he would have a vis uh, vis visibility on the password and he can make use of this hash to authenticate to multiple uh, uh, servers in my infrastructure. And there is something called golden ticket that uh, once he elevates himself to 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 you know elevate his access or his id then this specific particular uh, the, there is an option to create an golden ticket with the, with the sophisticated attacks they have then he can basically authenticate to any server in my infrastructure and this is something that he can intrude he can he can introduce some ransomware malware he can basically bring my services down or maybe encrypt my data as well and ask for a ransomware so there are a lot of possibilities once somebody gets get hold of your infrastructure now what happens once we do the change change is something that cyber periodically performs so for us it's very tough to maintain a password complexity of 20 characters for an example that too with combination of uh, you know, a special symbol, alphanumeric characters, and alphanumeric uh, alphanumeric combination. So it's it's tough for us to memorize a 20 character password, and it is very rare that we used to put uh, such kind of 20 character password as well in our day to day life. So what CyberArt does, it basically changes the password every time the session happens. So let's say we have just connected to a Unix box. The moment I'm through with my session, CyberArk makes sure that it, it changes the password. So there would be the hash value. This is basically, uh, you know, capped on the target system will no more. Or the, since the password has changed now, it, we, we, we will not have a static hash value which is sitting on the server. And eventually it is, it is basically secure in terms, in terms of, you know, uh, someone, in terms of making someone uh, get hold of the credentials, it will not be possible at all now. So there are a lot of components that CyberArk has. Now we will discuss one by one what exactly the functionality of each component and what are the use cases of component. So first of all, we'll discuss about the enterprise password vault. Password vault is the main component of CyberArk. So let's 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 uh, uh, let's discuss a bit about it. What exactly the vault is all about? So this is basically the vault. Vault is nothing but a Windows 2000 server or Windows 2016 uh, or 2012 R2, and it basically secures all the credentials. So let's say if I have a credential uh, which I use to log into the target system, I have server ABC, I have uh, login ID administrator, and I have a password party at the rate one two three. So this is something that I use to make a login interactively to the target system. Now once I onboard this particular uh, uh, accounts in Cyber. I will not have visibility on the password because CyberArk will make sure that it gets periodically rotated. It should not be exposed to me and it will just allow the session uh, for me to the target system. So I am being a user or an administrator will not have any visibility on the tar uh, on the password at all. So there would be different safes under a vault or uh, you know safes would have the accounts onboarded to it and safes would have the members added to it. So only the members who are uh, linked to that particular safe would have visibility or would have access to the accounts or they can basically connect to the target system uh, which, are, which are for which the accounts are onboarded in the safe. So just take an example that we have a bank secure room wherein we have dedicated safes allocated to us. 
uh, we maintain a private key with us and there is a key that is given by the bank authorities. So once we put in both the keys, then only we can access the uh, safe and then we can put any ornaments or any, uh, you know, precious uh, things into that particular safe. So this is same like uh, in CyberArk as well, wherein we have multiple safes for different, different teams. Like there could be safe for Unix team, there could be safe for Windows team, database, networks, anything. And accordingly, they would they would only be able to access their accounts. None of the people would have accessibility or visibility of the accounts that belong to a different team. So here we are basically maintaining the segregation of duties, wherein uh, there will not be any kind of overlap or, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or access for anyone or any any kind of uh, you know uh, we, we we would be eventually working on the least uh, least access principle wherein we would only have the access to work whichever required to us not beyond that so cyberac vault uh, provides us this particular uh, you know uh, benefits of securing all the credentials so it is the most critical component of cyberac because all the onboarding all the recordings all the audit logs and all the you know uh, you know uh, this thing encryption happens on the vault only so just a, yeah all integrations also happens from the vault so let's say if i were to integrate my ad for authentication purpose i just want to make sure that whatever the authentication methods which are followed in my organization organization the same should be followed for cyberarc as well so that has to be done from the vault let's say if my organization is, has opted radius authentication oracle sso or octo authentication so accordingly i can provision the same authentication for vault as well vault is nothing but the cyber authentication so basically i can i can integrate the same technology with the cyber as well uh, i want to integrate my smtp so that whatever the activities which are which are being done on the cyber i get a notification about it so this is smtp I want to synchronize my clock as well with CyberArk, so I can integrate NTP as well. I want to send all logs to my same solution, so I can integrate syslog as well. So, so basically, uh, uh, basically, it should be, uh, you know, uh, since it's it's the most critical component of CyberArk, it should be on the secure location. So, ideally, ideally, the preferable uh, option is to put it in the data center itself, which should always be on-prem and it should always be a physical server. The reason for being it physical server, let's suppose it's a VM or a cloud. So in VM, we do have a possibility of getting a snapshot or a cloning. So if somebody clones your vault or somebody takes a snapshot of your vault, in that case, your entire secret is compromised because he will have the details about your secrets as well. He can get into your vault, he can do, do anything. If it is cloud, so we have keys to authenticate to the cloud instances. And if the keys are compromised, then there are fair enough chances that the vault is again uh, compromised and eventually our, our secret is compromised as well. So it is always recommended to put the vault under the physical server. Now vault has different layers of security. So these are authentication. So you, you would have two-factor authentication, first of all, that you can integrate your uh, LDAP as, along with radius or ldap along with saml you would have other authentication methods as well uh, but these are the out of the box but there are very minimal configuration needed if you are uh, if you're going for some extended authentication as well then you can maintain the sod as i said that uh, you would have only visibility of the accounts that you own nothing apart from that then file encryption so once you onboard any account in cyberac let's say i onboard my username and password in cyberac immediately it gets encrypted in cyberac so I will not have any visibility of a plain text password once the pass, uh, when the, once, the, uh, once my details are onboarded in cyber. Then there is a network isolation as well. Now in, 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 in some organization you might have heard or maybe in some geographical location you might have heard that they do not want to expose their infrastructure or they do not want to expose the IP range or something. In that case, cyber provides us the uh, you know, uh, subnet and IP based access control wherein you can hide your infrastructure which are onboarded let's say if i have an ip range of for an example i'm just putting a very simple example here let's say this is the ip range of an infrastructure which i'm onboarding these are the servers and the mission critical servers of my organization I do not want to expose this thing to anyone or I do not want it to be visible to the administrators as well. So what I can do, I can do a network isolation with a, with in, on the CyberArk vault and these the, the, the accounts which are basically onboarded in this particular IP range will not be visible to any administrator as well. 
so this is something uh, uh, a kind of uh, regulation in, in most of the parts of uh, you know uh, geneva or i have heard in sgp as well that is singapore so that so we can basically hide the ip range and we can put the subnet range so the infrastructure which is onboarded and from that particular ip range will not be visible to anybody now there is a time based access control as well let's say i do not want someone to access cyberac after 5 pm once the office hours are completed so i can i can basically put that as well tamper proof audibility or auditability is basically uh, i cannot delete the logs so whatever even if i have done some sort of blunder in in, in any application or any cyberac as well there would be respective logs that gets populated and these logs are not uh, uh, you know i cannot get them deleted at all then there is something called firewall takeover so let's navigate to the uh, this is my vault server this is server 2016 in which i have installed vault So if I navigate to system and security and then firewall. So this is my server, local server firewall here. Okay, if I navigate to uh, advanced settings. So if, if I see the inbound rules with the, the traffic which is allowed to my server, and outbound, outbound route, the traffic which is allowed to go outside my server. You can see there are handful of routes, okay? So basically, once you install CyberArk Vault application to a server, the firewall is entirely, uh, you know, uh, entirely governed by CyberArk, uh, CyberArk only. So whatever the rules now going onwards, I need to put, I need to put by, by CyberArk. This CyberArk, uh, this firewall console has no relevance at all. If I, even if I try to add any firewall rule, this will not be applicable at all. It will it will not be functional at, uh, as well. If I try to open up some port locally by adding a firewall rule, it will not have any relevance. So once you install CyberArk, it basically takes over your local server firewall. Now, whatever the rules I need to configure, I need to get this configured to CyberArk uh, uh, configurational file. So finally, the session encryption. So whatever uh, whatever the authentication you do at the browser level, 80% of the encryption happens at your browser level as well. So once I try to log in with my credentials, the AD credentials, or maybe uh, you know a, a single sign-on credentials, basically that would be encrypted at my browser level only. Uh, so there is no chances of them for, for for them to be compromised. Plus, I can integrate a two-factor authentication as well. So in, in that case, I would have a radius uh, radius challenge or an OTP or maybe we push notifications or accordingly, I can get into the next stage. So this is a brief about Vault, what Vault does. Uh, feel free to let me know if any questions. We are just through with the first component. Anyone, feel free to let me know. If any something you are unable to understand, just let me know. Oh, Definitely, yeah, yeah. So basically, all the platforms are very well supported. So if you navigate to the uh, CyberArk PBW uh, here, so you can see that everything is a lot of platforms are available here for us to onboard. Let me show you. So as you can see, there is a scope of local accounts as well. You can put your desktop accounts as well, and you have a scope of server uh, local accounts as well. So these are the platforms which are very well supported by CyberArk. Plus, there is a marketplace in case if you are unable to see anything which is not, uh, you know, listed in this particular uh, particular uh, details in this platform list. So you do have a marketplace from where you can basically onboard anything in CyberArk. I, I have done the hardening, so I will not be able to access the uh, internet here. But there is a there is a scope you can onboard the platform or import the platform accordingly. So these are the things that we have covered. I mean, we have the uh, operating systems, we have the uh, database, we have the Unix systems, we have the websites, we have the mainframe, we have the iSeries, we have the uh, uh, SAP as well. So everything is well well covered in Cypher. Unix local account, can that be vaulted? Yeah, definitely, definitely. As you can see that there is a platform. As long as the platform is available, you can do anything. 
you can you can onboard anything you can uh, onboard with ssh key authentication as well you can on onboard with password authentication as well so we do have platform for both of them okay got it got it thank you yeah no problem so this is just about vault that we have seen now next component is the cpm so cpm looks after the password rotation so as i said that whenever you authenticate to any server it basically leaves a hash value now we need to make sure that we should we should not have any static hash value setting on the server in that case we need to periodically rotate the password once the session gets over so psm is cpm is basically an interface between the vault and the target system it basically reaches the target system it changes the password and it updates the password in the vault so there are three process it in total it provides the change password the verify password the reconcile password the change password as the name suggests it basically changes the password of the onboarded account and it updates on the vault the verifies password is basically it checks if the password is same on the target system as well as on the vault the reconcile password is something let's say if the change or verification gets failed so in the reconcile process there is an elevated account let's say if i have onboarded for an example root account now somebody has uh, you know bypassed cyberarc and he has changed the password of this root account now what reconcile process does it basically changes the password of the root account again with a super admin account and once the password is changed it can update the password on the vault so in that case whatever the whatever the you know uh, uh, you know uh, synchronization between the credentials which were missing which is done by the reconcile process with the help of a super elevated account in the case of uh, windows domain account we we do have domain admin as a reconcile account so in case if any of the account is not verified or changed so reconciliation process would be invoked and it will basically make sure that the password is synchronized on the vault as well as on the uh, target system there is one more thing it provides it basically does the discovery scan now what discovery scan is all about discovery scan is something where you, you can get to know that how many privileged accounts are there in in your environment so let's say if i scan my active directory or maybe a domain or an ou or a, or a set of servers i can get to know uh, the, the 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 accounts which has privileged access so it basically checks what group membership the accounts are having let's say if the accounts are falling under the domain admin group if they are falling under local uh, uh, domain rdp group if they are falling under the backup group if they are falling in the local administrator groups that means it would have the uh, privileged account tagging and accordingly it will indicate that whether you want to get them onboarded in cyberarc or you want to get them deleted so in case if they are not being used you can you can get them delete completely from the system because these are actually the gateways for an intruder and a hacker to get into the system or alternatively you can get them onboarded as well right away after the scan gets completed So this is about the CPM, which basically looks after the password rotation. The next component is basically the PVW. PVW is a web interface for an uh, for an uh, for an um, uh, for an for for an administrator as well as for the end user. So this is the PVW. So you would have a lot of options in the PVW. You can do the health checks of the component which are deployed for for you. So I can I can navigate if I'm being an administrator. I can do the health checks. Like these are the components I have. I have PVW. I have CPM. I have two instances. Uh, I have one instance of CPM. I have one instance of PBW. I do have PSM as well in my organization. Then these are the accounts. I can access the accounts. I can connect to the target system as well. Let's say if I were to connect some target system, for an example, let's try connecting one target system again. So I would have visibility of the account that I own without exposing the password. I can connect to any target system of my choice. I can do my work. I can do my BAU. I can make the file sharing done as well. And then I can uh, uh, my I will have very restricted access as well on the target system. So I will not be able to do any kind of elevated task if I'm being a part of L1 or L2 team. So this is how connects. Hopefully this should connect because I have done some activity yesterday. So now I'm connected to the target system. I can add user here. Sorry, add user. So this is a permission denied. I can make a pseudo less pseudo less password here. 
and i can navigate to uh, uh, i can navigate to add user i can get the ad, uh, user added as well i can navigate to directories as well i can do some patching work as well on the target system i can also do the file sharing as well if i were to do so i can i can navigate to winscp here this is a connection component i can navigate to uh, to the target system it will basically invoke the winscp and i can do the file sharing as well from and to my system, workstation to the target system so there are a lot of options available uh, through pbwa it's basically the uh, web console or interface of cyberac which which basically provides you to connect to the vault or the target system size for, for being an administrator it, i can i can do all the activities which i need to do from from, from admin perspective and from the end user perspective uh, we can they can basically connect to the target system they can fetch the reports as well for for the target system they can basically uh, you know uh, they can basically the uh, approve the request as well in case if you have given a 4i check that someone has to approve get their request approved before they actually connect to some mission critical server so the, all of the activities are very much possible through cyber or pbw so this is how the winscp works here it will eventually start the session and i can move the files from my system to the target system so it will take a while to get started Similarly, if I have some different file agent wherein I want to move the files, for example, FileZilla, I want to put the files to the target system and put the files from the FileZilla to my back to my system. So that is possible as well. If I want to navigate some sites, maybe I have a corporate web page, LinkedIn or a Facebook, I can navigate it to CyberArk as well. Uh, since my organization would not want me to know the password of the corporate web page, so I can basically update the uh, update the things on the target uh, target LinkedIn page. Uh, and my actions would be recorded as well. Similarly, if I want to access service now for an example, so I can access service now as well from uh, from PBWA. Or maybe if I want to access browser for an example, uh, uh, my my website wants to know what exactly I'm browsing on a day to day basis. So I can also connect to the uh, Google Chrome or Internet Explorer. I can I can navigate to the websites and my actions would be recorded as well. So basically, it's more of like a control layer that you can put uh you know for the end users and accordingly there would be actions uh, their actions would be recorded whatever that performing the target system the password you are saying no 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 i'm talking about in a file or folder or something from local machine to the connection whether it is rdp or something uh so most of the times that the file sharing option would be disabled so okay, if okay. it is a machine critical server so definitely your organization would not want you to copy anything to the to the machine critical server reason being if you execute something which is not intended or maybe which is which, which sounds malicious to them in that case there would be high risk so they want to make sure that whatever you are putting on the target system should be audited so cyberac is something which provides you that mechanism wherein your actions would be tracked your, your there would be visual logs and audit logs what exactly you are putting what exactly you are executing executing on the target system so in that case we need to use winscp is it yeah winscp or any 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 other file uh, sharing uh, component as well maybe uh, for example uh, this thing filezilla is also supported with cyber so you can put it now i whatever i am putting on the target system or uh, importing from the target system which will, would which would be recorded as well so someone can get to see that what i have transferred from and to my target system so okay. here i can navigate the folders as well of the target system whatever the folders i have so this okay. is something which is basically control layer we have okay and and do you see any slowness whenever to whenever took any rdp connection or something is there any slowness while performing be use yeah. Uh, yes, I mean there could be some scenarios due to network latency. So we need, we need to make sure that components like like the, for example the component which basically allows you to the session to the target system should be as closer as possible to the to the to, to the network range which you are trying to access. So that you need to decide during the course of your architectural discussions with the with, with the client. You need to understand where exactly the target system are placed. Accordingly, you need to place your uh, you know file uh, password change component like CPM. And the session-based component like PSM and PSMP, it does matter actually. So basically, uh, uh, for an example, your vault has to be in the secure location, so it has to be in the secure uh, core infra region of your data center, and it should not have any exposure to the external firewall or any public domain at all. So that is that is a part of architectural discussion. So you need to understand how exactly their their their, their architecture is all about, how the data centers are segregated, what is the DR 
scenario where exactly their dr is located so you need to factor everything before actually suggesting about uh, the architectural uh, thing on cyber perspective okay yeah so, so according to, yeah yeah so it's it's more of like uh, more of like a, yeah the connectivity uh, from the vault to your domain controller basically you would just require the domain controller for the authentication purpose so your vault right. has to have some good connectivity to the domain controller so the end user do not uh, face any kind of uh, authentication latency uh, latency while authenticating to the pbw or anything no no, no it's it's only till till the authentication that you need to also so what you would be doing you would be putting the closest domain controller listed in the uh, yep. uh, in the in in the in in the in the in the in the pbwa so here what you would be doing so let's say this is my domain controller for example so i'll be choosing the closest domain controller which is basically closer to my vault for authentication purpose to, to avoid any kind of network latency once the users are authenticated the authentication part is completed now they need to make sure that uh, you know, they just need to connect to the target systems and accordingly we would be placing the components of the uh, cyber app closer to the target system so let's say if they want to take a session of a windows machine we'll make sure that uh, the the particular subnet that they are trying to access the, my psm is connected or well 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 nearer to that particular subnet so there could be multiple okay. instances that i can install for the component if even if they are scattered if the target systems are scattered along the geographies as well that is not a problem we can put the components accordingly okay perfect got it ajay thank you no worries so this is the 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 report section as well so end users can basically extract the reports for activity report whatever they are they 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 have done or maybe their team has done they can get to know what entitlement they have or their team has whatever the status the the uh, privileged account stat compliance status they have like this basically indicates whether the password has changed in a periodic manner or not password has verified in a periodic manner or not and there is a uh, entitlement report what sort of access they own on the cyber act side what sort of access they have on the safe level so this is something that they can they can anyways uh, extract uh, the reports as long as they are part of uh, admin uh, auditor group so they can do that this is more of like uh, integration your active directory or a domain so let's say if i have, i have multiple domains uh, in my organization and i want all of these domain users should authenticate to cyberarc only so i do have a choice to integrate all domains with cyberarc so accordingly these people will only be connecting to the target system through cyberarc they will not be able to make any kind of interactive login reason being once the cyberarc is deployed in any organization the direct access for the end user is completely deleted so all the only medium for connecting to the target system is through the cyberarc so there will not be any kind of cyber act bypass once the users are onboarded into cyber act application and this is the administration task so i can do the administration task as well with the pwa i need not to get into the pwa vault every time for making uh, any kind of admin level task vault is only required or access to vault is only required when you are doing some sort of very elevated task so there are some uh, specific tasks that can only be done by navigating to the vault like for an example patching if i were to do some patching on my vault server reason being it's anyways a windows server so anyways i need to do the patching periodically so only in that scenario i need to navigate to the vault and i will do, run the patch and i will reboot the server as well so so this is this is about pwa then comes the psm psm is again very important component because it looks after all the recordings are happening so let's say i am connecting to a target system let me navigate to the visuals here so this is the psm psm is basically a jump server from which all the sessions are routed so let's say if i am being an administrator and i i want to log into a domain controller let's assume this windows server is a domain controller what i'll do i'll put in my user id and password and i will be connected to the domain controller now what if my password getting compromised so if some somebody is aware about my password or if he is having some malicious intent he can get into the target system as well which is a domain controller he can do some sort of malicious activity he can down uh, he can basically stop some services or make the some services disabled or he can he can maybe run some ransomware or anything i mean maybe unintentionally or unintentionally but having my password being compromised there are lot of risk associated with it now what psm does once you try connect uh, through the pwa when you click on connect through pwa you reach still the psm okay the psm there would be a secure channel that is that happens till the psm and psm basically uh, pulls the password or retrieves the password which is onboarded in the vault okay once the password is extracted it basically pushes the password on the target system okay 
so here uh, there, there is no scope of the password being uh, known to me just like we have connected to unix machine now the password was not required at all i just clicked on connect and eventually i was taken to the target system so password is not needed i need not to uh, get uh, i need not to see the password string at all it is up to the psm which basically injects the password of the credentials on the target system so psm is very important because first of all it is acting as a proxy server second it is it is it is a it is a recording server as well so whatever the target system activities i'm doing let's say if i'm doing some patching work i'm doing some user addition work i'm doing some maintenance work i'm doing some monitoring work it would be thoroughly recorded by the psm and there would be visual logs that would be captured by psm and eventually uploaded to the vault again on the vault it would be encrypted so even i'm being an administrator i will not be able to see the uh, visual logs until and unless i'm a part of that respective group so these these logs would be encrypted and it, uh, these visual logs would be encrypted and stored in the vault server this is about uh, this is about uh, psm now there is a counterpart of psm called psmp ideally we can connect any machine through psm like unix machine uh, unix machine database network devices uh, websites uh, windows boxes uh, i series we can connect anything from psm but let's say if i want to have a native experience of using a putty Okay. I want to make sure that I want to uh, use a putty instead of I do not want to authenticate to the web console rather I would authenticate to a putty. So there is a something called uh, PSMP which is a counterpart of PSM through which I can launch the session through putty only. So let me show you how does it look like. Now this is a putty. Uh, so this is basic, this is basically again a component of cyber which is installed on a unix server and here uh, what i what you would do here you would connect with a connection string so the connection string is nothing but a series of information that you need to provide so first of all this is my ad id let's say for example j is my ad id this is the account target account that i want to connect this is the target server where this account is basically sitting and this is the psmp server so let me change it to 143 here so this series of information i need to put in the putty i can do all the configuration or pre-configuration which are needed uh, at the putty level itself and eventually i can click on open and i will be connected to, to the target system so here i would have my native experience of using putty without authenticating to the pw solution so this is more of like a counterpart of psm and it is specific to the unix uh, so wherever you require ssh connectivity or telnet connectivity in that case you can use this putty option or psmp option Basically, the, the the core principle of using cyber or any PAM, PAM solution is to uh, is to avoid any kind of plain text credentials to authenticate to the target system. It should always be, uh, you know, uh, through through the uh, without a passwordless authentication. It should always be a passwordless authentication, and there should be a periodic change of the credentials as well. Now, uh, now let's navigate. I'm just skipping it for a while. The disaster vault recovery so disaster vault disaster recovery vault is basically the counterpart of uh, uh, production enterprise vault so in case if my production vault being down i do have an automatic failover procedure so all of my components which were in, uh, earlier interacting with the enterprise password vault they start connecting to the disaster recovery whatever the integrations i had with this particular production vault the same integrations are with the dis disaster recovery vault as well so the end user will never get to know that my uh, production vault is down because there would be an automatic failover that happens and uh, it uh, hardly takes 15 to 20 seconds may maybe in the middle of the night if something goes wrong you do not require any kind of manual intervention automatically the failover happens and your services would be resumed automatically okay so this is just an identical server of the world ajay for failover do we need to make any changes at database level no no not at all just it's just a configuration okay. file is there so you just need to mark whether you want to have an automatic failover or a manual uh, failover. So ideally, it, it is always automatic. So uh, this particular uh, disaster recovery vault takes over the vault services and uh, it basically does all the integrations, whatever the, the you know communication that was earlier happening through your production vault, that, that same happens through your DR vault now. Okay. Then next comes the event notification engine. So this looks after uh, the emails. This is not a component, it's more of like a service. 
this basically looks after uh, the emails uh, about the uh, about the events that which are happening on the cyber app. So let's say if I have a password change failure, I have a reconciliation failure, my DR is invoked, my component is down. So accordingly, I would get a notification on my mailbox. So this is more of like a SMTP integration with the cyber app. Now next is on demand privilege manager. This is basically a Unix component which looks after the uh, whitelisting of uh, whitelisting of uh, commands as well as the blacklisting of commands. Now let's assume that I have a team of 10 people. I want this. There is a company. There is a mix and match of L1, L2, and L3. I do not want an LB, L1 to execute any L3 level command and L2 to execute any L3 command. So what I can do, I can whitelist and blacklist the command. So this is possible through uh, through OPM, where I can basically list down the groups. Uh, I can make some groups uh, for the people of L1, L2, and L3, and I can put the commands accordingly. So whichever the command which are not intended for an L1 resource, they will not be able to do so. Whichever the commands which are not intended for L2 resource, they will not be able to execute at all. So accordingly, I can achieve SOD in terms of uh, you know uh, in terms of Unix environment. I need not to do it at at the Unix environment. I can put the same access level created or same IDs created on the on the Unix side on the target system. Maybe I, I can create all uh, root level accounts, but though the accounts are same, still the people will not be able to. Uh, elevate their access at all. Reason being, there could be some white whitelisted command, there could be some blacklisted commands. Only whitelisted commands they can execute. Nothing apart from that. So this is achievable through on-demand privilege manager. So these are all the components.